Hello, my name is Adil Zuri. I will do a presentation on emission study of pollutants at petroleum refinery station in Lages, Santa Catarina, Brazil. Just a quick introduction, Santa Catarina has an important industrial complex which occupy a prominent position in Brazil. The manufacturing industry in Santa Catarina is the fourth in the country regarding the amount of enterprises and its fifth in the number of workers. The segment of clothing and food products are the one that generate most employment. But today we will talk about petroleum refinery station in Lages, Santa Catarina. So this is the outline of the presentation for today. So we're going to cover location of the study area, process involved, definition of emission factors, emission inventory, concentration analysis using L screen, dispersion analysis using air mode and the treatment method. This is the location that I'm going to cover for today. So now we are going to see around here. It's uh, in Lages, Santa Catarina, Brazil. Zone is 22 and hemisphere is south and a longitude and latitude as below. Today we are going to talk about petroleum refinery. What is petroleum refinery? The petroleum refining industry converts usually converts crude oil into more than 2,500 refined products, including LPG, gasoline, kerosene, aviation fuel, diesel fuel, fuel oils, lubricating oils, and fixed stock for the petrochemical industry. Petroleum refinery activities start with the receipt of crude for storage at the refinery, include all petroleum handling and refinery operation, and lastly, they terminate with storage preparatory to shipment the refined product from the refinery. The petroleum refinery industry employs a wide variety of processes. A refinery's processing flow scheme is largely determined by the composition of the crude oil feedstock and the chosen slate of petroleum products. In Lages, Santa Catarina, there is a new petroleum refinery operating in the study area with an investment that already exceeded 1.4 billion reais. This is the summary of the processes involved in petroleum refining facilities, which is one, separation process, which is separating gas, oil and um, solids. Usually, um, there is uh, atmospheric distillation, vacuum distillation, light and recovery gas processing. And the second is a conversion process, which is stabilizing the product, including cracking, reforming, alkalization, polymerization, isomerization, uh, coking and vibes breaking. The third one is the treating process. The petroleum treating process including hydrodesulfuration, hydro treating and chemical sweetening, acid gas removal and de asphalting. Next is the feedstock and handling. This is to prepare for the storage and uh, transfers. The process including storage blending, loading and unloading. The last one is auxiliary facilities which includes boiler, wastewater treatment, hydrogen production, sulfur recovery plant, cooling towers, building <coughs> system, compressor engine, and flaring. This is a process flow diagram for the refinery flow scheme. So today we'll be covering four main processes which emit the most emission in within petroleum refining facilities. So the first one is fluid catalytic cracking unit, which is FCCU. This process uses a catalyst in the form of very fine particles that act as a fluid when aerated with a vapor. Fresh feed is preheated in the process heater and introduced to the bottom of the vertical transfer line or riser with hot regenerated catalyst. The hot catalyst vaporizes the feed, bringing both to the desired temperature within 470 to 525 degrees Celsius. The high activity of molten catalyst, catalyst causes most of the cracking reaction to take place in the riser as the catalyst and oil mixture flows upward into the reactor. The hydrocarbon vapors are separated from the catalyst uh, particles by cyclones in the reactor. The reaction products are sent to the fractionator for separation. The second unit is moving bed catalytic cracking unit, which is MBC. 
This process takes place as the catalyst and hydrocarbon move concurrently downward through the reactor to a zone where the catalyst is separated from the vapor. The gases reaction products flow out of the reactor to the fractionation section of the unit. The catalyst is steam stripped to remove any absorbent hydrocarbons. It then falls into the regenerator where choke is burned from the catalyst with air. The regenerated catalyst is separated from the flue gas and recycled to be mixed with fresh hydrocarbon feed. Air emission from the catalytic pro cracking process are combustion product from the process heaters and flue gas from catalyst regeneration. Next one is reciprocating engines or RE. This is the most natural gas fire reciprocating engines and it is used in the natural gas industry at pipeline co compressors and storage station at the gas processing plants. These engines are used to provide mechanical shaft power for compressors and pumps. Next one is flaring. Flaring is the process which burn natural gas to, in a controlled manner when extracting oil. Flaring reduces the risk of gas ignition to facilitate or eliminate product that has been isn't fit for use. This section contains descriptions of the refining process that contribute significantly to air pollution. Table below is the list of the emission factor for direct process emissions in a petroleum refinery according to EPA 1980s. Factors are expressed in the unit of kilogram per 1000 liters. In this process, we are going to use the for calculation, we are going to use the expression below, which is E times equal to A times emission factors. After running the calculation, this is the result of the emission inventory by process. As you can see, FCCU emit more MPSO and carbon monoxide than the other unit. However, reciprocating engine or RE emit the most NOx than compared to other units. On the other hand, moving back catalytic cracking unit emits a fair amount of MPSO and carbon monoxide. And finally, flaring emits significantly low amounts of everything. This is the comparison of emission inventory by industry. As you can see, the petroleum refinery facilities emit most of the polluted, more than industry 7, industry 8 and vehicular emission. Before moving on to air screen application, this is the standards that we are going to use, which is Konama 491 air quality standards. This is the input data that we are going to use for air screen. After running the air screen for all pollutants, this is the concentration versus height of chimney. For this project, I'm going to use four different heights of chimney, which is 50 meters, 100 meters, 150 meters, and 200 meters. As you can see from the red line, it is actually the Konama limit. From these sets of graph, only MP concentration is okay and did not surpass Konama limit. Based on our observation, chimney with height 150 meter with 2 meter diameter is the best as it complies Konama 491 standards for MP10 emission. However, the height will not help the SOX and NOX emission as it surpasses the standard way above the limit for both primary and secondary. The SOX pollutant concentration proved to be over the limit starting at a distance 80 meter. The NOx pollutant concentration proved to be over the limit starting at a distance less than 10 meters. The highest value are closer to the site. Also, all concentration value decreased gradually above 100 meter distance. 
and high chimney height demonstrate low concentration value and better curve. However, it is favorable to increase the chimney height to 100 meter as it demonstrates the best performance. Now we are moving on to part 3 which is air mode. So this is the input for the air mode which is the emission concentration of pollutants MP10, SOx and NOx from the source. And we are using the height of chimney for industrial 7 and 8 which is 50 meter and our petroleum refinery at 150 meter. The, the diameter of the chimney of the petroleum refinery is 2.5 meter and industrial 7 and 8 which is 2 meter. And from this air mode, the output data is going to be rank, max and plot. First one is max data. According to the simulation result, we can know how many numbers of events that violated the limit of the Konama that happened at which time and places. So the output file containing events exceeding 150 micrograms per cubic meter. And from this um, max data, we can see about 684 cases of violation of Kanama limit. Next one is rank data. This rank data creates the highest ranking of concentration during the modeling period. From this data, we can assess the magnitude and the impact of the highest point of the concentration. As you can see from the figure below, we can see that the rank of the highest average concentration with dates and longitude and latitude. Next up is plot data. So this data is the concentration data that can be used to plot the isoline. With this data, we can plot the dispersion model using QGIS to show the dispersion of the pollutant according to the concentration using the longitude and latitude and average concentration. However, I cannot manage to make the map as the QGIS is not working on my computer even though I completed running all the program. So I cannot visualize the dispersion of the pollution. The last one is post data. So this post data only analyzed at one receiver through the entire time of modeling, modeling without performing average. Since we have multiple number, a lot of numbers of receiver, we can only select a few points to analyze the data and make our work a lot easier. Since I cannot manage to run my QGIS, so this is the, the results. With my sets of data, I managed to pull out some information. The first one is for MP10. The highest concentration that we can find is 1548 microgram per meter cube at, X, at longitude 554,000 and latitude 6523015 at date of 23rd of June 2019. For the number of violation, there are more than 90% of the data that exceed Konama limit. The remediation for these problems is to device configurations include plate scrubbers, back beds, orified scrubbers, venturi scrubbers, and spray towels to remove particulate from the output or exhaust. For the SOx, the highest concentration that we can find is 14,416 microgram per meter cube at a point below, and we found 286 number of violation. So for the remediation, we can use the low sulfur fuel oil, which is a bit expensive but doable. The next one is exhaust, uh, exhaust gas scrubber technology, which is uh, passed through the scrubber tower where the liquid is showered over it, fresh water blended with caustic soda, um, and used as a scrubbing liquid, which reduces SOx to 95%. The scrubbing water is sent to a water treatment effluent and emulsion breaking plant after which, is, which it can be discharged overboard. Next one is cylinder lubrication, which is a good quality cylinder lubrication. Along the efficient control system such as pulse or alpha lubrication system can neutralize the sulfur in the fuel and reduce SOx emissions from the engines. The last one is NOx. 
we can see the highest concentration of NOx is 115,893.70 microgram per meter cube at a location as below. So we found around 6,749 6, points of violation, which is quite high. However, we can use a remediation to remove to reduce the um, the emission, which is the current, which is normally we are using humid air method. In this method, uh, water vapor is mixed in the combustion air without uh, before supplying it to the cylinder, and the air from the TC blower, blower is passed through the cell that humidifies and chills the hot air, taking moisture from the cooling tower until air saturation is achieved. The next one is exhaust uh, gas re uh, recirculation or EGR. Uh, we are going to use some amount of engine exhaust gases and they are going to be sent back to the scavenge uh, space to mix up with the air to be supplied to the cylinder for combustion. This reduces the oxygen content of the air and hence reduces uh, formation of NOx. The next one is water injection and water emulsion. In this method, water is added to reduce the temperature of combustion leading to low NOx emission. In water emulsion, fuel is blended with water and in water injection, a separate fresh water injector is mounted to the cylinder head with which injects water. This method has a drawback in, of increasing the specific fuel oil combustion with reduction of NOx by only 20 to 45%. And the last one, we can use selective catalytic reduction. And this is the most efficient method to reduce NOx emission, which is up to 90 to 95% of the reduction. In this method, low sulfur fuel oil is used and exhaust uh, temperature is maintained above 300 degrees Celsius. The exhaust gas is mixed by water solution of urea and then it passed through the catalytic reactor. The only disadvantage of the SCR is it is very expensive uh, in the terms of installation and operating costs.